Welcome to the Scoop and Order. It is Wednesday. Michigan suffers another huge loss. What a terrible offseason it's been for them. We don't feel bad at all. Uh, we're going to get into what was said the last few days in the press conferences. Uh, Five-star superstars coming to visit this weekend. This might be the biggest uh, visit weekend that we have this spring. There's some stars coming. We're going to break all that down. Uh, and what's going on in spring ball? They got uh, a couple practices left um, this week. It's going to be a big day tomorrow, big day Saturday. Uh, and see what guys are making their moves. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys. If you guys have questions, get the Super Chats fired up. We will get them uh, answered. Uh, again, the questions are always outstanding. We appreciate you guys corresponding with us and bringing the heat. A lot of you guys have great questions. Uh, almost all you guys do. So we appreciate that uh, each and every night. If you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. As always, we're going to get into this. Uh, shout out. Where you guys are watching from, shout out who you guys are watching with. Um, and who do you think is going to be the breakout star of the spring game? It's a few weeks away. Um, generally, younger players are participating. Obviously, the older players play a very, very little amount, if at all. Uh, but who's going to break out? It's going to be Julian Sane, J.J. Smith. A lot of young blood out there that is really talented blood. And we're going to get into all that. But first, Nevada... Ohio State is having the best offseason I've ever seen um, with Chip Kelly and Trey Henderson coming back and just a slew of, of great players in the portal. Is Michigan having the worst offseason you've ever seen for a defending national champion? Yeah, I mean, they might be having the worst offseason for any team, ever, let, let alone defending national champion. I mean, they're just they're having an absolute disaster of a uh, season. I mean, it's like... Ohio State loses Tony Alford, and, and they lose their All Big Ten safety Rod Moore. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like it's been that kind of a uh, kind of a thing. And then Michigan gets Tony Alford on top of that. So uh, no, you, no, we can go through the litany of losses for Michigan, but this latest one, the Rod Moore one, is devastating. I mean, you know that you're talking about a guy that was you know a surefire captain, a guy that was a linchpin for their defense, and uh, torn ACL out for the year. Um, I, you know, they don't have the kind of depth that Ohio State has, or something where they can sustain losses like this. And when, when you know, when Keon Sab has gone to to Bama, and um, you, you lose more on top of just the, the, you know, their offensive losses were just so substantial. They, they are 128th out of 134 college football teams in the country in terms of returning production. So they returned virtually no production on the offensive side. And so now when you're having these big hits to the defensive side on top of the coaching staff hits on top of the schedule on top of everything else. I mean, if, if Michigan is a good team and a good team this year would be 10 regular season wins, um, then everything I know about college football is a lie. Coaching doesn't matter. Uh, offensive line play doesn't matter. Quarterback play doesn't matter. Uh, experience doesn't matter. Schedule doesn't matter. I mean, nothing matters. Um, but I don't think that's the way it is. I, I think this is going to be a return to the, the, uh, the, a, a regression to the mean as it were for Michigan. And, um, yeah, the Rod Moore thing, you know, you, you, you hate to see anybody get injured, uh, for sure. So we'll say that, you know, first and foremost, um, but bad things happen in Michigan. I, I, I'd be lying if I was all broken up about it. I, I, I would. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie to the audience and say I was crying or really upset or I, I wasn't. It's Michigan, so I don't care. But um, and, and that very well could make me a bad person. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. But, um, yeah, Michigan is having a bad offseason. They had the shortest honeymoon of any champion for sure. I think their honeymoon lasted about 12 hours or something like that before the hit started coming. And, um, yeah, it's just been a long, dark winter. And... <laughs> the thing is, the big stuff hasn't even hit yet. The NCAA stuff hasn't even hit, so they're already they're already in the midst of the uh, of the dark, endless winter, and and the bad stuff. The, the the White Walkers haven't even come over the over the wall yet. So uh, buckle up, Michigan fans, because it's going to be a cold, long ride. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what it still makes it even more stunning when Tony Alford shows up and that's uh, that's what he's walking into, man. He's walking into, is this a straight cash grab? I mean, that's the only thing you can, you can say about it at this point because he's leaving. I mean, this is why I say team's serious now. I mean, if JJ Smith is really the best player, the best uh, receiver on the team right now, and you got a Mecca, you got Edison Tate, like that's scary. 
You know, then you got Trey, you got Quinshawn. I mean, every room outside of tight ends. And, you know, I think the O-line will be above average. The O-line will be fine. I know everybody likes to be um, worried about everything, but I think our line will be fine. I think I think this line with Chip Kelly's scheme will be better than the offensive line that we had with Paris and Dewan and those guys a couple of years ago, Luke Whippler, um, with Ryan Day's scheme. You know, with C.J. Stroud, who did... You know, again, C.J. Stroud is going to make... $500 million, $700 million. Like when he comes up for his next deal, he'll be making $60 million a year. But, you know, in college, you know, him not running really hurt our offense. You know, and I know he's the greatest throw we've ever seen. He's fantastic. And obviously this kid, you know, he's, he's a NFL pro bowler as a rookie superstar. Like I get it. But in college, you know, when you really need it and you gotta, you gotta own that ball and you gotta run that ball. Like if your quarterback doesn't run, man, it's like, it's like, you know, you're literally, it's not one hand behind your back. It's like, it's like being like one legged, uh, in a race or something like that's what it's like. And I think that Will Howard, um, obviously he can't throw like CJ. He won't get drafted as high as CJ. I'm not saying he's CJ, but I think with Chip Kelly's scheme and how big Will Howard is and the movement stuff and a lot of the misdirection stuff that Chip Kelly likes to run, our offense could be every bit as good, if not better. Um, I think we'll definitely be better on the ground. I mean, I, I guarantee that this running back uh, duo is going to be much better than anything we had with CJ. Um, and I think that adding Will Howard is like the third head to the monster is going to be really scary. So I'm excited to see what these guys can do. Uh, Michigan, again, I love seeing them in anguish and pain. Uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me how happy that makes me. Um, but Nevada, as we get into uh, tomorrow's practice, you know, they got Thursday and Saturday. Uh, they get the student day, which is always kind of a, they're always careful on student appreciation day because that was something that urban invented was like student appreciation day. So it's like, it's not the spring game in terms of being vanilla, but it's, you know, it's, they're not going to show the bear front. They're not going to show, you know, they haven't even sold the bear front. I'm sure. Um, in, in spring, they, they're not going to run all kinds of crazy stuff. I think that that'll be a thing where the scheme, the offensive defense will be pretty vanilla because I think that. There's a point in spring where they've had, you know, three, four. That'll be the fifth practice in full pads uh, this Saturday. And they want to run some kind of basic stuff, some remedial stuff, so they can really evaluate the players. Because especially the really young guys, like, they're not going to know the playbook, like, completely after five practices uh, or seven practices, um, five in pads. So you want to run some remedial stuff so you can get a good eval. So it's not just guys like, you know, busting assignments, not playing fast. Cause that's something that if you really boil down what these coaches talk about, if you really know what they're saying when they're, when they're at press conferences or whatever, cause again, these coaches are just incredible about saying absolutely nothing at a press conference, but there's a lot of it where it's, you know, guys that don't play cause they don't give effort and it's cause they don't know what they're doing. So those are like the two biggest things that keep guys off the field. Or if you're like Katie McDonald, like Katie McDonald, I think it's too heavy uh, for the staff right now, but you know, I mean, when you weigh 345 or whatever he weighs, like, that's still really hard to move. Now, it's only hard. To, he can only go for about two, three plays at a time, like two plays at a time. Because by three, play three, four, five, if you go fast, man, he's going to be, uh, you know, gassed out. Um, but I, I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what, what goes on on Saturday. Obviously, there's going to be 80 million uh, people there. So it'll be fun. Uh, but Nevada, what do you want to hear uh, from the team for the, the next two practices? Because tomorrow is going to be a big one. Thursday, um, Thursday, like the one before, you know, the student appreciation game, like it's, it's that was usually pretty heavy because they're, you know, it's it's more of a, uh, you get a better eval because the media is not, you know, when the media is there, because the media will be there on Saturday, students will be there on Saturday, they're all going to have their video phones out, they're going to be videoing everything. Like when that goes on, the coaches don't like, they're not breaking out the new stuff. They're running the old stuff and they're not going to give anybody any sort of Intel when all these videos end up on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Uh, but what do you want to hear about the next couple of days at practice and we'll have some people at practice tomorrow? Well, I think, look, first of all, it's important for people to, you know, you got to manage your expectations about what you're going to see as you're, as you're pointing out on this. And I mean, this a related, but different point. We had a, uh, a thread, a really you know, super thread going on on BuckeyeScoop.com, and somebody put on there today, I don't believe our offensive line has played a good game in the past three years. And, and I'm like, 
what kind of expectations <laughs> are we, do we have if we don't think that our offensive line has played a good game in the, in the past three years? I think we played pretty good. I mean, when we let, when we you know put forty one on Georgia, that that was pretty good. You know that Georgia team was was okay. had a, had a couple of NFL players on it and stuff. But um, I think just as a fan, when you're going to this stuff or as you're watching this stuff, yeah, keep in mind it's going to be very vanilla. It's going to be very basic. Um, they're just looking to you know do things in, in the most you know you know unspectacular way possible. And you know with guys, you know I'm just looking for which young guys are kind of flashing. You know I, I, what I've learned from watching this for long enough is if, when you see guys making plays, generally they're playmakers. I mean playmakers make plays whether it's in basic time, whether it's an exotic time, whether it's against the ones, the twos, the threes, or whatever it is. And you know, I want to I want to watch Sonny Styles and C.J. Hicks and Gabe Powers and see who's running to the ball, who's getting there, you know, a little faster. I you know, I want to watch the offensive linemen and see what the combinations are. I want to see, you know, do they have you know, Josh Fryer inside? Do they have Josh Fryer outside? You know, when they have Josh Fryer inside, do they have Montgomery doing it right? Do they have Fitzgerald? Do they have Tigra? You know, you know, who's you know, what are the kind of the the lineups? What are they doing? What are the terms of the matchups they're doing? Who's the first quarterback? I mean, when I know Will Howard's going to be up there. But, you know, what's the rotations after that with Devin and Julian? And, you know, who do they have them running with and who they have them throwing to? So that's the kind of stuff that I'm watching for. Um, but, again, I, I think that it's important to moderate expectations about this stuff because, you know, you're not going to get the whole story. But I think you can get a little bit of it. If you if you watch closely and you're clever enough, you can get a, you know, a little bit of what's going on and get a little bit inside the coach's mind, even though they're going to try to keep it as, uh, as tight as possible, this, this, especially – this Saturday when they have the open, you know, when everybody in the world is there with a video phone, that, that isn't the time they're going to be breaking out the, the good stuff. That is for sure. Yeah, and I think that as spring goes on, you're going to see less of Jack Sawyer, less of JT2, Maloa, less of these guys, Trey Henderson uh, is going to get mothballed. I mean, even, it'd be to see how they handle Quinshawn because Quinshawn hasn't been here, but he's obviously a guy who's had, he had a ton of carries last year. So do you mothball him in Mecca? You know, the guys that are back that are established, like, you don't really need to see a ton from them. I mean, even, like, Caleb Downs. Like, I mean, I, he, you know, you got to see him in the system, but, you know, Denzel Burke. Uh, I, you you want to kind of put those guys in bubble wrap until the season and let Jermaine Matthews Jr. Uh, Malik Hartford is out for the spring with a shoulder, but he would have been a guy that got a ton of reps. But, you know, you want to see some of these young guys, especially the DNs, um, Caden Curry, Kenyatta, Edric Houston, uh, can they play? I mean, those guys are near three now, man. It's go time now. They, they ain't freshmen anymore. They, ain't, you know, these guys got to give us some plays. They got to give us twenty plays a game, and so Jack and, J, and JT don't die. I mean, they could play. They could literally play seventeen games this season. Like that's like that has to be your mentality when you're Ohio State. Even though you want to be undefeated, you want to be the one seed. You don't want to have that that opening round playoff game, but they could play 17 games in a college football season, which is insane. Like when Ohio State went 14 and 0 and beat the Miami Hurricanes, like that seemed like a long season. And then you throw three more games on top of that. And again, we've talked to Nazi, but at the end of the season, man, whew, you got Michigan, Oregon, probably in the Big Ten Championship, and then three playoff games. So it's like, you know, it'll be. As much as it is about who's the best team, it's the team that's the healthiest, the luckiest, avoids injury, avo avoids attrition, and the deepest. And that's the thing about this team is this is a very deep team. And again, you got to knock on wood because you know we're seeing with Michigan, you know their their safety tears is ACL. Um, you know it could happen. And again, knock on wood, but it's just it's one of those things where the depth is going to be so critical. And this is the deepest Ohio State team I've ever seen. Honestly, I mean, I look at the corners, I look at safety, I look at the D line. Uh, you know, linebackers, we need a couple guys to step up, but I, I feel good about the core of that group. It's not, I think there's four guys that can play, counting Gabe Powers with, with Sonny and CJ and Cody Simon. Like, I don't think if you put them out there, it'll look like vomit. You know, the O line is deep. You know, again, that's why NIL is important, the portal is important. I mean, you got to keep these guys uh, on the roster and keep us deep because, like, this D line. You're gonna need to rotate guys. Like this, this can't be like last year where Jack and JT played 90 percent of snaps and the other guys barely got in. So I'm really excited about it though. I think this is gonna be uh one of those really big years for for the Bucks. Um yeah, 
Let me uh, see how this chat is going. This chat well, is going. Well, when Go the, now, now, hold on, Mr. B Mr. Martin. You had to be really excited to hear Ross Bjork talking about the uh, the projected new facility for Ohio State and talking about <laughs> using words like world class and uh, you know oh. better than anything in the NFL and and stuff like that. So I, I know you've been the leader of the band. You're you're the, you're the guy that, that's anti every other sport in, in Ohio State. And uh, and I am. now I, you're, you're getting <laughs> I am. you're getting your That's wish you're care. getting your wish the new building the Barton building and do you th is there a chance that they don't call uh, it the Woody Hayes the the whack it's like the Barton like the, the BBC or something like the Barton building complex or something like that the Barton building complex the band yeah. Barton building complex no, I, uh, <laughs> the band the, the band don't 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 let him in. <laughs> I put my statue like like a vault, vault the Valder the Voldemort of the Woody Hayes. I'm not banned. I have never been there. No one's ever said anything about that. I just I'm like, guys, I have a life. It's like I have a wife, two dogs, two kids, pregnant woman at home, jobs. Like I I don't even have time. I don't even have time to like breathe. All I need is like, <laughs> oh, you guys wonder why I have to have a few beers sometimes. I'm like, God bless. I work like crazy. It's nuts. But I uh, I don't know. I I think that. They deserve it and they need it. They need more functional space. The coaches need their own offices separate from where the players are. So they can go up, put put up a recruiting board. You know, again, like I'm not asking for anything that's that's crazy. Like, I mean, every NFL facility, the coaches have their own office, and then there's like the O line meeting room. Right now, they're all the same thing. Brian Hartline's wide receiver meeting room is the same as the wide receiver office. So, you know, if guys want to come in and watch film. Uh, in the projector room, like Brian might be there doing something. And again, when you're doing recruiting or you got to be on the phone, you got to be making calls, like it's nice to be able to shut your door and not have the players in there. But I mean, that's kind of where they're at at this point. So I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking for anything other than just some, some major quality of life improvements. Um, but again, this is my opinion. I mean, again, whoever designed the building, God bless them, but not putting a second, be it, not being able to add a second story to the building is the most insane thing I've ever heard of ever. Cause if, cause they did that, I mean, they could literally be building, they could just be building up right now, but they didn't think to do that. We have a bunch of super chats. We're going to get into these. Ben G. Thank you for being a scoop off. Remember, thank you for the 10. Any surprises among the freshmen that standing out? Can't wait for the spring game. Happy early Easter. Um, Nevada. I mean, I guess I'd say a little bit Julian saying, even though he's the number one quarterback in the country, but I guess how much he stood out and it's easy to say JJ Smith, but we knew JJ Smith was insane. Um, and he is insane. He's, he's that dude. Um, I don't know. I mean, we, I mean, the old linemen usually don't stand out. They haven't, uh, linebackers really haven't. Uh, it, it's hard when you're on a team that's this deep when you're a true freshman to really stand out, I guess, but JJ's doing it and Julian saying are doing it. Any other names that have popped for you, Nevada? I mean, because again, it's just, this is a deep team. So there's not a lot of room for freshmen to really make big time impacts. But uh, your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll broaden it from freshmen to just kind of guys that maybe, you know, less heralded, less known. But players like, you know, Arbel Reese, uh, players like Jason Moore, um, players like, you know, Jermaine Matthews, who we, we've, we've talked about a lot. But, um, you know, those those guys are really – Arvo Reese is an interesting one because he, he's a guy that's getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, kind of came in and you, you're thinking that he might be slotted one spot. And I'm not sure where he's going to end up because he's a big dude. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's he's a pretty strapped up dude. He's a pretty big guy. And um, Ohio State likes him a lot. And when I talk to the players on the team, you know, we always say the players know who the players know. He's, he's one of the guys that they talk about a lot. And, and he's a guy that um, – you know, I'm, I'm not sure where he fits on this OSU defense, but I think they, they want to find a spot somewhere because he's really good. And, uh, you know, I like him a lot. You know, uh, you know, Jason Moore, I I just think the sky's the limit for him. I think he's, he's a guy that they're they're really, really excited about. They're really excited about what, you know, what he can do for them on the line. And um, that you can't have enough fellows like that. Then, you know, they just don't grow like that in Ohio that often. And um, that's why you get a kid out of, like, out of Maryland. You get him in there and um, – you know, just you know, excited to see him. But you know, it's it, it, it like you said, it's been hard for the freshmen to kind of go and you know, other than just kind of make their way, do you know, keep their head above water, 
I, I don't think anybody's really in danger. Any of the, the the younger guys are really in danger of losing their black stripes right now. I'm trying to think. No, I you know I I, I no. Just like I said, I think we're kind of at that that thing where it's just it's tough for guys to kind of make a move on such a deep team. But you know, I, I watched some of the cornerbacks. I watched uh, some of the other wide receivers that are in there. But for Ohio State, you know, we'll know more this Saturday. I think some of the, this will be a chance for some of those guys to kind of step up, make some plays, and and emerge, and, and maybe they'll be household names. But uh, but but Reese Matthews and more are, are my my young, deep, not deep deep dive guys, but less heralded guys. Yeah, I mean, and and if you do redshirt freshmen, like I don't know if there's a role for Will Smith. I'd love for Will Smith to find something to do this year. Um, because again, they got to rotate these D line guys. Because last year we were thin. We we ran about five guys, maybe six at most. Really couldn't trust Kenyatta. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how much further these guys can get along to get into get in Larry's good graces, so to speak. Nay Sayer, twenty three. Thank you for the five. Are the Cheetos up north even going to be able to field a team? And what would you say to idiotic people that don't believe sign stealing is a serious offense? Nevada OH. I O. Well, I mean, everybody associated with the program left. I mean, except for Sharon Moore, he's like the he's the, he's like the Bane guy on the on the plane where they say we expect one of you in the wreckage. Like Sharon Moore is like that dude. They gave him a, a contract, kind of set for life. But I mean, they're not going to be good. Uh, Wink Martindale came in there for a, a cash grab. I guarantee Wink Martindale has nothing to do with college football. He's never been in college football. Um, I was with him in Denver. He's kind of a douche. So I think, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, like sometimes you can't, when people are dumb, it, it's not even worth your, your energy or your oxygen to, to explain how, like, how big of a, an issue this was. Like, I mean, again, this was a very sophisticated, I mean, it was sophisticated, but it was also idiotic at the same time. But I mean, they had spotters everywhere. They had people videoing stuff. Again, it's all stuff that is like, you know, implicit that you can't do that. Like there's no gray area. Like you can't send people to advance scout video signals, tie it to the film, <laughs> memorizes, memorizes. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it, it was a, it was a thing where like, I mean, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Um, they're going to, these guys are going to get hammered for it. Cause it's cheating. I mean, literally it's, it's so different than like the guy in the casino says, Oh, well, all of the electronic stuff I've got in my, you know, on my, on my, on my, pants or jeans or whatever or in my shoes that it helps me you know count everybody's cards like that's not a big deal like well i mean the casinos think it's a big deal um you know it's like when once you know when a kid when u.s integrity gets involved uh the company that nevada talked about at nauseam about how you know they, they look at irregularities and betting and uh that type of thing and you know michigan magically all of a sudden got really 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 good and we're like okay, it's the same three-star guys that they had the year before, but now, magically, they know where everything's going. So, I don't know. I um, It's kind of like I, I was thinking of you uh, today, Nevada, when that the NBA player got busted because there was irregularities in the betting patterns for his prop betting. Um, he got suspended, and they're investigating it. It's like, those guys are really, really smart. And if you can get one by on, the, on those guys, then – Congratulations, because they don't miss much. Uh, again, because they track all the action. And again, go. Don't believe me. Go look at U.S. Integrity's website. Look who their clients are. Uh, I don't know. MGM Grand, Caesars Palace, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, uh, NBA, ma you know, Major League Baseball. It's it's literally every league in the world. Um, most of the teams in the world, every gambling entity in the world, they all hire these guys to track that stuff. So when they get involved in Michigan's uh investigation like that would scare me to death but because they're not just doing it for for their health or because they like they spun a roulette wheel and it landed on michigan football they're doing it because there's a lot of uh interesting stuff going on um but of that your your comments you know naysayer and again thank, thank you for the five naysayer 23 says are the cheaters up north even going to be able to field a team which is questionable at this point especially after the second portal hits and what would you say to idiotic people they don't believe sign stealing is a serious offense, Nevada. Well, sign stealing isn't a serious offense. So it, as usual, it's the Michigan fans missing the mark. It's not about the sign stealing. It was about what they did to get the signs. 
the advanced scouting, which is expressly against the rule, the electronic surveillance, which is expressly against the rules. That's the stuff. So it's it's like them talking about it's it's only a cheeseburger. It's only, no, Michigan fans, you're missing the point. It's not about signs. It yes, everybody steals signs. Burt Carton stole signs from the press box while eating nachos during games or something with binoculars. That's not against the rules. But sending out little Geppettos beforehand to, to record the signals of teams in advance at 39 different Big Ten stadiums, that is against the rule. So those two things could not be more different. As for Michigan, I think Michigan's going to be there, – there's a way to profit on Michigan being bad. It's called the future wins prop bet. And Michigan's future regular season wins prop is set at – the line is set right now at nine and a half. So they have to win 10 to, to go. And I'm telling you, they're going to be under. They are not going to win 10 regular season games. No, there, there's just not a chance that they win 10 regular season games. They'll, they've got two losses already on the schedule in Texas and Ohio State. And um, they're, they're not going to win every other game. So if you want to, if you want to make money, and about about, from time to time, I'll have these spots where I'll come to you and I'll be like, guys, here's your opportunity to make some money, whether it be UFC, whether it be betting hardball to the Chargers, because if you all remember the show, Nevada Buck was going to bet the hardball to the Chargers. He's plus 350. And, oh, no, he's, he's staying. He's staying. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's gone. And this is another one. Michigan, under 10 regular season, uh, or nine and a half, under, uh, under nine and a half regular season wins. Bet the under. Get rich. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was one of those funny ones when the people, the Michigan folks are just like, Oh no, he's flying back to sign his extension. I'm like, well, it's only been on his desk for like three months. So, you know, all of a sudden he's got an opportunity to go to live in Los Angeles, dodge the bullet and go live happily ever after. And I'm like, he doesn't want to be there. He hates Ward Manuel. I mean, Ward Manuel made him take a pay cut. Like, are you kidding me? And then he gets to go to the Chargers and make $20 million a year to live in LA. Like, duh. You know, he gets to call a champion, do a double middle finger salute. Um, the team's got, you know, all these, all this horrible stuff that's about to happen to him. Like he wanted nothing to do. Like he's loving life right now in the NFL. He can't wait. And again, those guys can get to the NFL, man. The NFL is where it is at in coaching. I'm just telling you, Jeff Rittenhouse. Thank you for the five. Appreciate you. My good friend, Kirk, how is your little one doing with his leg? Well, still better than I am. Cause he's on, um, he's on spring break right now down in Florida at grandpa's house. So he is officially cast free. So there's the little cane stir eating watermelon this morning. Uh, he's with grandpa down in Florida uh, with Kimbo. So little cane does no longer, he no longer has a cast on, but his leg is basically like a big ball of mashed potatoes because there's no muscle in it. So he's, uh, he's like the biggest crawling around kid of all time. But, uh, Tony T, my father-in-law, is taking good care of him with Connie T, uh, my mother-in-law. And my old lady Kim is down there, and Kirky, little Kaney. So they will be back tomorrow to torment me, and my wife will be back to beat me incessantly once again. So I cannot wait for that. It's been nice having all of my war wounds heal up while she's been gone, uh, but I know I'll get right back to getting my lashings as soon as she comes back home. Uh, Jam OSU, thank you for the deuce. Here's a good question. Why is nothing happening to Keenan Bailey, Nevada? Thoughts on that? Why? Well, I think there is stuff happening. I just don't know what it is. I, I, you know, there's obviously some sort of a, a disciplinary uh, record being, you know, or a report being put in his record, some sort of derogatory comment. He'll probably be fined. Um, but, you know, Ryan Dave clearly handling that inside. I mean, that's Ryan's guy. So, to me, I honestly would have fired him. I, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I, you know, and not just for sucking, but I just, I don't think you can fight <laughs> your uh, strength coach. I just, I just, I just, I just think that's weird. You know, I, just think, I just think fighting at the workplace, uh, I know it's football. I know it's aggressive. I know guys get out there, but I, I think staff has got to be better than that. And, um, you know, I would, I would have fired him on the spot, but I, I believe there is some sort of internal discipline going on for him. him. But this kind of goes along. Remember when Joe Pa had like the guys that were like, you know, committing felonies and he gave him like the 
they had to clean up the stadium or something like that, or had to do like a yeah. ride along with the police or something. And I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a real serious punishment. This, that's kind of where Ryan Day is on this. This is his, uh, his version of a ride along is uh, the, the, the Keenan, the Keenan Bailey letter in the file. Go, go right along with the cops and have a, yeah. have a time. Yeah. I mean, I, I take the ride along any day of a run in the stadium series. Run the stadium series sucks. It's terrible. So no, nah, they, uh, the, they didn't run the show. They cleaned up the stadium after, like they they, they gave oh them, like trash God. bags, and, they, and and they walked around kind of like Baker Mayfield on those Prudential commercials or whatever it was, like filling bags of trash or something. It was just like, I mean, it was <laughs> pretty hardcore stuff. It was bad, really bad. Empty, emptying out the popcorn vending machines. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of this stuff is it's just you know they keep it under wraps because there's no real benefit to letting it get out, and unless you fire the guy, like. You just gotta, you know, kind of take it. I mean, it's one of those things they probably were hoping it wouldn't get out, but it did. But I just can't believe a guy would fight a strength coach in front of his players. Like that's crazy. Like it's to me, like I mean, and then you get you get dog walked by a strength coach. It's like it's like the worst of every like possible world when like you know you shouldn't be fighting. You know, obviously, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys work in you know, whatever, I mean, whatever your, your enterprise is that you work at or your job you work at, like you can't fight your coworkers, no matter how mad you get at them. I mean, a lot of times you can't even verbally fight them, you know, you, you, I mean, let alone physically, physically. If you do that at any other job in, in the world, you're probably, unless you're in the UFC, like you're going to get fired. So, and even Dana, you know, Dana would, you know, he, he, he'd find the crap out of guys. Like if they get in a fight on the ultimate fighter and they'd actually throw blows, like, Dana would go crazy on him. So even with ultimate fighting, there's like rules against it. So yeah, it, uh, it's strange. Um, sometimes I hate how good our sources are because like, I wish I didn't have this vision of like the little ginger dude, like running up and yelling and talking trash and acting like he was hard. Cause he's like from South Florida and he acts like he's hard. And like, and then he hits this coach and then this coach just bull rushes him and beats him you know, to death. And the player's going to pull him off of him. And I'm just like, what an idiot. But again, that's just is what it is. I mean, there's some coaches in that building that got nine lives and it's because we haven't really, uh, we haven't gone on them yet, but there's some of those guys, like if we wanted to, they'd be, uh, they'd be at the Sitka right now. Neil Harris. Thank you for the deuce. Uh, uh the four one one dudes. We always appreciate that. My man, thank you for being on here every night. Uh, I love that. That is an absolute, uh, that's a great one. Uh, I love when you say the four one one dudes, um, that might be on a t-shirt. So, Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for always being on. Uh, per usual, David Fennell, my dude. Thank you for the five. <laughs> this is the bad. You're gonna love this because he sent me the text message of this. I was gonna put it on the screen, but it's got your address on there, and I don't want, I don't want all of the beautiful women of Buckeye Skip to just bum rush your house, David. So I'm not gonna put your address on the screen. Um, stoked! I get to finally catch this live. Glad you're on here, my friend. He ordered legitimately a Burke Carton jersey. 74 oh. with the word carton on the back. So it'll be here in a few weeks. So I, I'm hoping he wears that to the meetup because that'd be, I mean, I'll buy you every beer in the, or Nevada and I'm going to send Nevada the tab. I'm going to buy, I'll buy every beer in the house for a Burke carton jersey because that is, that is strong. That might have to be like a, you know, like one of those like tuxedo t shirts, like a tuxedo in the front and like carton 74 in the back because that would just be pure class. I wouldn't even know what to do with myself if I saw a Burke carton jersey, but. Are you proud of yourself, Nevada? Because you coined all of that. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I am, I am kind of proud of myself. I think that there are certain things that kind of stay. You know, it's like, like it's like Joe DiMaggio being like the Yankee Clipper or something like that, or you know, um, you know, it. Like, there's some great nicknames, and I think Burt Carton is is up there. It's like one, of, you know, it's it's one of the great nicknames of all time, and, and uh, I. I'm glad to have been part of it, but yeah, I want to see, I actually want to see, I want eyes on, I want proof of Carton Jersey, Carton 74 that will, uh, that will live forever. That That's definitely Buckeye Scoop Hall of Fame worthy for sure. Yeah, it's, Burt Carton's one of the great nicknames. It, it's up there with like Butterbean, you know. <laughs> Butterbean. <laughs> Butter, Butterbean. <laughs> that's a good nickname. Uh, there's only one, there's only one Butterbean. Oh, oh, chocolate chip, scoochie, my man. Uh, Nevada, he asked. Thanks for the deuce. Appreciate you, my friend. What about Edric Houston? Thoughts? What have you heard about Edric? Yeah. I've heard some good stuff about him. Uh, 
I think Hendricks unbelievable. I, I've said it many times. I, I was as excited. I, no, I was more excited about him than, than even JJ Smith um, coming into the class because I just I love defensive players and uh, he's lived up to every bit of the height. It's it's harder for defensive guys to shine and turn guys around like JJ's doing on the offensive side. But no, Edricks Edricks is absolutely going to be a horse. You know, we just I, I feel like I talk about him every every night and and, and I I don't want to be redundant. I want to be like. Oh my gosh! I just turn on it's like the Edric Houston and JJ Smith show, but those two guys are—they're just different. You know, Julian Sane, Edric Houston, JJ Smith are guys that you know, can walk onto the field and just be immediate impact, and you just know that they're difference makers. So I uh, know Edric has been every, every bit as good as I thought he would be. Uh, plus, and and he'll he'll play and he'll play a lot this year. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with a guy like Edric is he has to learn to play hard. Like a lot of these kids, they show up and they don't have to play hard in high school. Like Ohio State, man, you better play hard, especially if you're trying to get into the rotation. Like, and yeah, you know, a lot of these, especially D linemen, they love to take plays off. They, Cause like D linemen can take plays off. Like offensive linemen can't. And no lineman, if he takes the playoff, he's got to give up a sack, get the quarterback sent to the emergency room and have the, the ambulance drive on the field like Braxton in the Purdue game. But Edrick's going to learn how to play hard. And if he learns how to play hard, which he will, he's going to be a force of nature. But but that's not that's not an Edric thing. That's just like a young player thing, especially on defense. Like they've got to – they just have to learn so much football. You know that's why you know there's there's very few true freshmen that step in and, and do well on the D line because they're gonna learn a lot unless they're just like Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa. Unless they're just supernovas, like they're not. You know, even like Chase Young didn't do much his freshman year, and he you saw how good he turned out his uh, third year when he was second pick in the draft. But um, it takes some time. But Edric's got a huge upside, and I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. Thomas Taylor, what is up, my man? Hope you and the family are good. Uh, they will all be at our little Buckeye Scoop uh, party at Buffalo Wild Wings. Excited about that. Thank you for the five. Nevada, is that ten thousand? Ten thousand dollar free roll at even money. Does that fake national championship get vacated? Ooh, do not know. Your thoughts on that, Nevada? Yeah, does it get vacated? That's the tough one. That's the question I get asked a lot. Um, I, I, I absolutely believe they're going to be vacating wins going backwards. There's, there's no question about it. It's a question of wh whether they'll vacate the championship, um, which seems extreme, which seems like a, a – a harsh punishment, but from talking to the people at the NCAA, like, so, so you're, you're talking about like con real legitimate contacts at the NCAA, they are treating this as the most serious cheating scandal, on-field cheating scandal in the history of college football. So do I think a punishment like that fits the crime? I do. And I, I think the easy justification for it is they were cheating this year. I mean, Connor Stallions was on the sideline dressed up like a Central Michigan coach with spy sunglasses at night this season. So is it legitimate that at least until Stallions was fired, which is November 1st, that they, they forfeit those games that he participated in and help them cheat? I've always maintained it was those games where he had the biggest impact. And you look at these Ohio State National Championship seasons that were derailed. They weren't derailed in the Michigan game. They weren't derailed in the, in the, in the bowl. They, they were derailed losing at Iowa. You know, losing to Purdue, losing, you know, losing some of these in, to Michigan State, you know, losing to some of these inexplicable games along the way where you, 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 you know, trip up against a 18 point underdog and you're like, oh my gosh, we just lost the national championship. So do I think they should vacate those games this year? I do. And if they vacate those games, would that have automatically made them ineligible for the playoff and ineligible for the championship? Yes. So um, if I had a free roll on it, 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 if it was even money, if it's even money, I'm saying no, just because the craziest. But if it, say I got three to one on the free roll, yeah, I'll, 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 I will take the free roll at three to one that they vacate the championship. For, for, and I'll go. take my thirty grand, and then I'll go to I'll go to Vegas, and if I if, if I'm gambling and they ask me for my my identification at the tables or something, I'm telling my name is Burt Carton. That's what I, I, that is the name that I use at the tables. I say my name is Burt Carton. And uh, I'm standing in the uh, the Boulevard Tower under Carton. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's your identity card. 
Burke Carton. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Mr. Carton, yeah. here's your hand. Here's your hand pay <laughs> on the hundred four aces on the bottom on the hundred play. Uh, oh, oh gosh, oh, dare to dream. dream. Dare to dream. One day, baby. Uh, Ohio State six one four. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for the five. What is up, brothers? Love the show. Appreciate the love. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being on here as well. What's the chances of Ohio State recruiting a quarterback in Columbus? Ooh. God, I want to say like zero at this point. I mean, I can't remember the last game we've taken from Columbus. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, by the way, can't wait for the meetup. I can't either. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be slammed. Um, I'm recruiting the crap out of people right now, so I think it'll be a good time. Uh, what do you think, Nevada? I mean, I don't know. We're just, we're so internet. I mean, we're so national now that like, you know, Ryan Day's got the same mindset that Urban Meyer had. Go recruit the number one quarterback in the country, which for Urban was like Deshaun Watson. And, you know, you're always going to get him, but like, that's what we're going after. And you know, the odds of the best quarterback in the country being in Columbus is like almost zero because there's good football everywhere. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'd say close to zero. I mean, the, the Grunkmeyer kid from Olin TNG, which is my school district, is... I mean, he went to Penn State, but he didn't get much of a sniff from Ohio State because we got Julian Sane. And again, it's nothing against that kid, but I mean, I'm not taking him over Julian Sane. Um, your thoughts, Nevada? What are the chances Ohio State recruits? What's oh, so much sure this? What's the chances of Ohio State recruiting a quarterback in Columbus? Yeah, um, yeah, long. The odds are long. When when is the last quarterback that we've had, even from the greater, you know, Columbus area? Can I? I'm blanking because I'm, I'm like, it, I'm mentally like going through the schools and it's like, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Joe Burris from the Plains and, and we don't even take kids from Ohio usually anymore at quarterback. I yeah, mean, I, is, I is, Joe Burrow, is Joe Burrow the last quarterback we took from Ohio on scholarship? Might be. Yeah. Haskins, yeah, Haskins Fields. Like we, we had the Baldwin kid from Texas who transferred out. We had Tate from Vegas. We had... I mean, is Joe Burrow the last Ohio quarterback? Again, I, I'm going to blank. So I was going to say, oh, no, it's, you know, we took Aaron Nolan, Julian saying, obviously from Carlsbad and from uh, uh, Langston Hughes in Georgia. I mean, CJ's from Rancho Cucamonga, or no, he's from uh, um, Inland Empire, California. So it's like, there's not, I mean, I is Burrow the last guy that we took on a scholarship from from Ohio? I think he is. What about that? 25. Now, Tavian St. Clair, he's a twenty. He's a twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's yeah. the next Ohio kid that we're gonna have. You know, but yeah. I was thinking like a so, guy that actually hit the roster because again, I again, I, I think they love Tavian St. Clair, but until they sign him, like it's, I don't know. I mean, he's he's like a top three quarterback in the nation right now, so I think that they love him. But you know, at this time, was it? I mean, at this time wasn't at this time last year wasn't Dylan or also committed to us? <laughs> it's like so. I mean, I don't know. We had Dylan Riola committed as our quarterback last year. Yeah. So the, the quarterback thing is something I don't even care about anymore because Ryan is going to go get the best guy he could possibly get. That's either going to be someone from his room, someone from high school, or someone from the portal. But, you know, I mean, we're we're shopping. And, I mean, we've we've had – that's the most transient position in college football by far as quarterbacks. Guys are coming and going I, every if, single – if, if, if I'm looking for a, a quarterback, man, I'm just going to – Southern California. I'm going to Southern California. That right. they they crank out more quarterbacks per capita than anywhere else in the world. And uh, specifically, I'd even go to Orange County. You could even just limit me just to Orange County, and I'll be just fine. Yeah, hey, I mean, you're right. I mean, there's certain areas where that's just like the the hotbed of it all. Um, but yeah, thank you, um, thank you, Ohio State six one four. Appreciate you, man. Look forward to seeing you and meeting you at the meetup. Uh, VP of hype. Thank you for the five. I may have missed this. What's the plan you mentioned to replace the Woody timeframes? Time the timeframes are never um, realistic. Again, I when I was getting recruited, I mean they had these renderings and they had this big spiel about how when you guys set foot on campus, like when I, my official visit it was like Al Johnson. This imagine that this wall has been exploded and this wall is switched back and there's an upper ceiling and you know and that was in O. Oh, Two December 02, I got that spiel. Like, they didn't get around to renovating the Woody Hayes until like literally 2007. Like, it was like literally 
like my junior year, <laughs> our weight room was literally on the indoor field. We had like a half of a, we had like half of a an indoor because they had to move the whole weight room out there because they were they were renovating and basically destroying the weight room uh, during the season. So they they were redoing the whole Woody Hayes. So the 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 wonderful building that I was promised that would be done when I would be a freshman and arrived at Ohio State wasn't ready until my senior year. So it was like four years after they claimed it would be ready. So they've been trying to get this done. I know for a fact that there were like two, there was a $50 million version and a hundred million dollar version. And with the cost of construction and goods, it, let's say that one's probably 75 million now and 125 or 150 million for the second version. But um, it was kind of like, do they do the, renovation again and add another thing again or do they you know kind of blow the whole thing up and and redo it so um the hard part with like with ohio state is like there's never a good time to do this and you're landlocked over there uh, especially with the fact they're putting the women's ice rink over there that they're about to build the or it's like i guess it's the all hockey building that they're they're putting in right over by uh what used to be the uh the tennis uh center that no longer is there that has no sign to be found anymore um so I, I think it'll be, God, hopefully within five years we'll get it done. But you know, again, they 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 couldn't raise the money for it. I mean, they they needed fifty, they wanted a hundred, and for whatever reason, like they said that funding was an issue. So, do you wait to try to get to raise the hundred, or do you just settle for the fifty? And that's what the people at Ohio State were considering. But I saw all the stuff. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was kind of sad, honestly. As much money as we've been bringing in, and like the football team can't get a better building. But again. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Like we've done just fine in the building that we're in, but there's a lot of quality of life so that we could add that would make it a much better facility. Nevada, uh, your thoughts. Again, you've been in athletic development and facility building and stadium designing and workout facility designing. Like, what are your thoughts um on your plans to or on the plans to replace the Woody Hayes and potential timeframes? Yeah, I think it's probably five years away. I think that's probably right. Um, I know I know Ross Bjork has made this a a I mean this is like the centerpiece of his speeches right now to boosters and donors um, is getting this done. So I, I and and Ross is a kind of get it done guy, and so is President Carter. So I think they'll they'll crank this thing along as quickly as they can. But I think on the fast track timeline is probably five years uh, for the uh, for the Barton Building Complex to be completed. And, um, you know, I, I, it'll be interesting to see when they, when we can finally see renderings and things like that. Um, obviously you and I have been following very closely the, the women's hockey, ice hockey facility is right there. We're, I know you're excited about that going up there, but, uh, yes, your beloved Buckeye football will get a building at, at some point. Now I understand the source of your bitterness. I never understood why you were bitter about the buildings <laughs> because, it's because you had to work out there on the, on the on the practice field or something like that, and you and you didn't play, you didn't have a miniature golf course, you didn't have a koi pond, and all that stuff like that when you were at the uh, playing at that thing. But you you still did good. You were an All American, so it didn't it didn't I, inhibit you from being a great player. I don't want any of that trash. I don't want like I don't <laughs> want all the golf simulators and all sort of garbage that they got in there. It's like I uh, I don't know. I, um. Oh, there you go. My, of course, my wife texted me. Braxton Miller was from Dayton. Yeah, of course. Duh. Yeah, I just, I think, I mean, I, obviously Braxton was a great quarterback. I, I think of him as a receiver when he was at the end. Um, there you go. Braxton Miller from Dayton. There's a, there's a guy that I forgot in the last few years. Um, but actually, no, I don't think I was wrong because because Joe Burrow was after Braxton, and you know, there I don't think there's been one between them. But I. Uh, I don't know, like the facility thing, it kind of drives me crazy because like, you know, like our girl, our girl Muzz, Nadine Muzzerall just won another national championship and they've got the worst building in all of college sports probably. And they've won two out of the last three national championships. So I don't know. I think the building's overrated. I think that the stuff they have at the Woody now is I think really, really nice. But, you know, again, it's, these guys, they all get in this, like, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, like mode where all of a sudden, like these guys, like, well, a and has this and Michigan has this and we don't have that. I'm like, these guys have a lot of good recovery stuff. I would have killed to have had cryotherapy. I would have killed to have had the, 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 the float tank. They have a lot of really nice stuff now. And like, I didn't have any of that. 
Um, I would love to have, they have a nice cafeteria now. Like we never had that. Um, so again, I, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like whining about the facility just cause I don't, I don't care. You know, it doesn't affect me at all. Like as long as, you know, they've got weights and dumbbells and squat racks, like they've got plenty of stuff to be good, but I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit better for the guys, but it is what it is. Donald and Karen Rossbach, thank you again uh, for being scoop off for everything for the five. Here we go. Uh, appreciate you, my man. The jersey I bought will be here on April 8th. I'll be sending it your way, Kirk, as soon as I get it. Thanks, Nevada OH. I O. I think that's a, a regular Barton jersey, not a Carton jersey. So I uh, appreciate <laughs> you guys. Yeah, well, when I get it, I, I will sign it. Um, It'll say with love, Burke, Carton, and Nevada Buck. And then I'll, instead of like, since so, so Nevada doesn't have like a jersey number, I'll just dip my hand in like a strawberry Oreo milkshake and I'll do like a hand print. And I can say this is Nevada's oh. hand. Yeah, it's, it'll like be like the Walk aces, of Fame like, in Hollywood. Like, like four aces, man. Four, I'm, I'm like four aces. I'm like, I'm like eight ball on, uh, on Seinfeld or something like that. I, I need a leather jacket with like four aces on the back. You know what I'm saying? You know what would be funny? Instead of like 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 four aces, what if it was like four aces and like a giant screenshot of like the hundred play machine where it's like it goes all the way up oh. through the thing? That see now we, awesome. now we're talking. That'd be tough on the embroidery machine if we did that on a hat though. The hundred play. But yeah, I'm saying awesome. like the hun- that's the meta. Yeah. Ace if in Nevada, doubt, like, call me just call me ace. <laughs> if it if in doubt, just play until you get four aces and then you can quit. You have to have discipline. Exactly. Discipline. Got to have discipline. That's the key. <laughs> wait, wait, wakes up. Uh, a scoop ultra member. Thank you for the ten. Appreciate you, man. Great to be back. Any news on the bigger recruits that are coming in for a visit? Ooh, you wouldn't say like David Sanders. We're actually going to talk about Mr. Sanders. Well, David Sanders is probably the best player in the country. Um, I mean, he is really good. It's funny. Like we were taking crap about Demon Lawrence, who I think is the best player in his grade. Because he's an eighth grader, but in Florida, like you have to understand, you can play varsity football as an eighth grader, which is crazy. You know, you can't do that in Ohio, but you can do that down there, which is nuts. But he was, I'm going to throw some David Sanders on. This kid is, he's like Paris. I mean, he's a Paris Johnson type. He is, he's really good. I mean, he's really athletic. This is a kid that you'd move mountains, mountains for, um, I mean this this is uh this is a guy that we really really need. You know, I think I think PJ, I think Paris is gonna be in town and they're gonna do the whole dog and pony show about look at Paris and his life. He's a sixth overall pick and he's gonna be playing left tackle this year for the Cardinals because they released David Humphrey. So I uh this guy's special, man. I mean this is uh uh we got him, we got the SFE kids, South Florida Express kids coming up. This is a big, big recruiting weekend. I'm telling you, like David Sanders I think he's the best player in the country. I could be crazy. I'm not. Um, you watch his film. He is ultra, ultra legit. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts on David Sanders? Because he is he is that dude. Well, the secret weapon in this whole David Sanders thing is the mom connection between Sanders' mom and Monica Johnson. Because uh, Monica Johnson is doing work here. And it's not coincidental that PJ is going to be in town. Monica's going to be in town. Uh, they're pulling out all the stops for this guy because they, they want him. Uh, but that mom connection sometimes can be really good. And, you know, you're not just talking about typical mom. You're talking about mom of the, soon to be one of the highest paid offensive linemen in, in the NFL type of guys. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not like you can't speak from common experience or, you know, learn from what they did because I think just about every other football mom in the world if they said well, you can follow Paris Johnson's footsteps and kind of get to this spot. You like, okay, I'll take it right now. You know, done, done deal. We'll do that for, uh, we'll do that for little Kirk Barton. We'll do that for Kane Barton. We'll do it for all those guys right there. If, they, if you can be the sixth pick in the draft. Okay. We'll, we'll take that right now. But um, no, I, I think that that, you know, Ohio State will know more where they stand, but they're pulling out the mom thing, which is kind of interesting. Um, as for the, the SFE kids, it was it's, it was kind of funny, I, and I and I I get the idea of clickbait. I get the idea of people on these articles, but when Boggs decommitted, you would have thought that it was like the end of days on some of this stuff, where it was like, oh, Boggs is decommitting. Well, 
dude, it's because Ohio State recruited over the kid. That's not being yeah. Mr. Mean because I think Boggs oh. is, a, is a terrific player. I mean, I like him. I like him. I think he's going to be a you know a, a, a great player. I, I, I think he's visiting Georgia. He's visiting Missouri. And, you know, I think he'll go on and do terrific things in, in college. But Ohio State's got – they're in on better guys. They just are. You can't take – nine wide receivers so brian's only got a limited amount of wide receiver spots and some of those guys are in this weekend so it's um big 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 recruiting weekend but sanders would be the sanders would be the biggest pull that justin fry has ever it'd be the first really big pull justin fry's had and carlo's a good one this would be way way better and um i got my fingers crossed that ohio state can work some magic yeah i mean like of the SFE kids, yeah, we're gonna get Jamie French. Jamie French is probably the best receiver in the country. I mean, he is a freaky, freaky, freaky dude. He is Garrett Wilson 2.0. Uh, and then we get a kid named Vernell Brown, who could play either way, he could play corner or he could play receiver, but he is like absolute electricity. And those guys both play for SFE. And like those were the guys this year on SFE. Over box like box. I mean, box could barely get on the field for SFE. And again, it's not everything, but you know, um, I think he's a nice kid. Um, but people that know <laughs> said he's he's not going to play over those two. Are you crazy? You know, and sometimes like it's 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 better to have a kid like that figured out before he gets here than maybe after. Maybe he's a guy that shows up and. You know, he's running with the threes and you know, Vernell and Jamie are with the twos right away. You're kind of like JJ. You know, I mean, now JJ is a different level of all the guys. He's the probably the best receiver to ever come out of South Florida at this point. Um, but like with Vernell and Jamie, like those guys are special, special. And Vernell's not committed yet. And Jamie's not committed yet. It's South Florida. So commitments really don't mean anything. But I'm telling you, man, like JJ Smith is going to get a lot of catches a lot of touches this week uh he's gonna get peppered with targets and that will not be an accident when all the sfe kids are here because all those kids are gonna be like well i want to go somewhere i can play as a freshman well if you're good like jj is and guess what you're gonna play a lot as a freshman you're not just gonna be uh the fourth quarter of the Akron game you're gonna start the Akron game um and you know ennis is up here tate's up here those kids love ohio state love ohio state like that is their that is their spot. They love Ohio State. So when those guys, because again, I get it. Trust me. I grew up in Naples. I'm from South Florida, not the Miami side of Florida, but the Gulf, you know, the, the other side of Florida. So I get it when kids are like, I don't want to go to Ohio. I don't like Ohio. I don't know anything about Ohio. I want to stay at the U or Gainesville or Tallahassee or whatever. But like when kids get up here, they're like, wow, there's a lot of stuff to do here. Oh, it really doesn't suck in Columbus. Wow, there's a good nightlife. Wow, the, the you know the the apartment I'm going to get is nice. Like the you know the, the the all the players like it. You know, the, the people are tight together. Ryan Day's a good young coach. He's not going anywhere. Like I think there's just like all these positives about Ohio State. Where you know you go to these other programs, like you go to like Florida or Florida State. Like I mean, can you guarantee that Florida's coach is going to be there in three years? I don't think there's any chance. You know, the U is a is a dumpster fire disaster. They have no fan base. Uh, Tallahassee, obviously, Florida State. You know, they nice year last year. Got dog walked by Georgia in the Orange Bowl, but I don't know. Like, are you gonna if if you're if you're placing a future better stuff? Because for these kids, this is a business. This is it's it's all business now. It's not man. I like the uniforms. Man, I like the, it, this is all business. This is how can I become the best player I can be so I have the best chance to go to the NFL. And again. That's great because, like, when a kid like JJ Smith comes here, he wants to go to the NFL in three years, like Marvin did, and be a top five pick. That's his goal. And Ohio State fans get to benefit from that because when a kid's driven by that, he's going to work like crazy, like JJ is. Um, so that's like what David Sanders is like, dude. Like, people project him to go to Clemson, to Georgia. I'm like, dude, do you really want to go to Clemson right now? Like, have you seen the direction of that program, like, the way that place is trending? Uh, Georgia, obviously Georgia's Georgia. They're going to have a, a first round pick tackle this year, but you know, Paris and Paris's mom is a real game changer because Paris is probably the, the most mature kid in Ohio state history that, that, that I've ever seen or been around. Like this kid graduated in three years. He was a first team all American. So he, he got his, he's got his degree. That's piece of paper in three years, which is crazy. It's crazy fast. 
Um, first team All-American, should have been a captain, in my opinion. I thought Ryan missed on that, but not making him a junior captain. Um, and he's in the league. And and he's he's you know, real his, his mom, his mom, Monica Johnson, is the smartest mother I've ever talked to in terms of um football and recruiting and the games. Because Monica, you know, Paris Paris Johnson Sr., you know, when when her and Monica were together, I mean Played at Miami of Ohio, Miami Redskin under Randy Walker. Um, she did like some academic advisor stuff working like for Miami University. So she knows all the games. She knows all the slick moves coaches try to pull. And she wasn't having none of that. And I, I'm telling you, when I interviewed her a couple years ago, um, she's one of the she's probably the most impressive, she's easily the most impressive mom I've ever talked to because she knew it inside out. And she had this presentation that she wanted, she went to all these schools and she had this presentation that she wanted to have done for her uh, to see when her and Paris would come visit, like at Michigan. Um, she wants, you know, I want to know who have you coached that have my, that has my son's body type. My son's six foot seven. He was two seventy or whatever and grew into three Oh five. So what are, you know, how do you plan to put weight on them correctly? Uh, how have you developed guys from, 275 pounds to 305 pounds. Um, who have you put into the league? Uh, show me your technical approach. I mean, it was like 80 questions and none of them were like, yes or no. It was all like dissertations. And I sat there and I told Monica, I was like, look, if I was the GA and they handed me that thing, that would take me like the entire weekend to do. And unless I was like the GA at Ohio state, like I wouldn't have even done it. Cause I was like, we're not gonna get this kid anyways. So, but I mean, she, uh, She's a really, really sharp lady. And again, that's why, again, there were some really stupid people that used to push a narrative that like Greg Studewire didn't have her phone number and Paris's phone number. And I'm like, dude, of all the moms I've ever been around in my life that are going to have, they're going to have Urban's number. They're going to have Greg Studewire's number. They're going to have Shelly Meyer's number. They're going to have Gene Smith's number. They're going to have the janitor's number. They're going to have the offensive coordinator's number. They're going to have every, I mean, it, it's that lady. Because that's all that's all sharp she was. So again, there are stupid people that push stupid narratives. And I'm telling you, with Monica, man, she did not play. And again, that is not a lady I want to be on her bad side, especially if I'm coaching her kid. Um, but yeah. And I gotta get her back on another podcast because she's she's uh she's actually um there's a decent shot she's gonna come to our get together, our Buffalo Wild Wings deal on April 13th, because she's coming to the spring game. So if she's not if they don't have her in recruiting mode at the Woody Hayes. Uh, she did say she was going to swing by. So we'll see. Um, uh, Nevada, your thoughts on that? And we can uh, move it along. Well, my thoughts on her being at the spring game, get together on, on before the spring game at Buffalo Wild Wings starting yeah. at 9 a.m. I think that's that would be unbelievable. We hope. I, but I hope she's recruiting too. So I kind of yeah. want her in re recruiting mom mode. But uh, that Buffalo Wild Wings thinks is going to be uh, – gonna be off the hook i'm jealous i wish i could be there yeah i um like i said if, if she's busy like she said she'd love to come by but you know if we got a bunch of five-star tackles there they want to meet her and pj then that's better for our business anyways because then it makes people happier about the offensive line so good with that uh kevin mcquaid appreciate you my man thank you for the five dirk so i'm i'm burke and i'm dirk and i'm carton so i can't even keep it all straight but hey i'll, I'll take it dirk and nevada any news on the running back coach search? I took the Dagestan Poppy picks in a $15 parlay, made $249.90. Killer. Shout out to Scoop World Order and Carlugi, Nevada OH. I O. Shout out Dagestan Poppy, baby. He's getting us paid, man. He went 5 0 on the picks we posted. We put it right on the show right before the, the fights went off. So. Dogson Poppy is killing the game right now. So uh, search for him on Twitter. He is a handicapper, uh, a great friend of Buckeye Scoop and the Scoop family. Um, and he is as sharp as a razor blade. So appreciate you, Dogson Poppy, for making us rich uh, and getting keeping us flush in Oreo milkshakes and uh, and um, money for the uh, for the penny slots hundred play. Um, <laughs> any news on the running back coaching search, Nevada? Uh, can we name? Can we just save Jim Trussell the running backs coach now? Because that'd be the greatest thing of all time. No, but one of our uh, one of our great insiders, uh, Forza Buck, is we all know we always say listen to Forza. 
he is saying, look inside the big, so that it could potentially be an existing Big Ten running back. Field. So that kind of limits it down there. So I, I, I haven't taken the time to go through who that could potentially be because we know it's not Tony Alford at Michigan. Um, but to, so if we go through the, the running backs coaches in the Big Ten right now, could one of those guys be in there? Because when Forza says stuff, I generally pay attention to it. So um, that that could be a that could be a little nugget of goodness. I don't I don't know any more than that, but that could be that could be a pretty good tell. Forza knows. Forza knows. Clay Alders, uh, thank you for the five. Nevada, what is the best piece of business advice you've ever received? And scum still sucks. That is a great question. Um, and thank you, Clay, for being a Scoop Ultra member. Thank you for the five. What is it, Nevada? What is the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Uh, you know, I've said this to you many, many times, and I, I think you've uh, you've got a better. Uh, uh, you're saying it's better. It's like envy is the thief of joy, or what, whatever it is. But it was it was basically to never let what anybody else has kind of change or define your happiness and and for me that was like a really great lesson to learn learned it from a, a really smart guy named bill walker um who was chief financial officer for our first company a company called caremark and um you know i was young i was like 23 years old and vp of operations saw what everybody got paid and was just i see some of this, these salaries and i was just like this is crazy this guy makes way more money and he's like were you happy before you knew that and i'm like yeah and he goes then why are you unhappy now and i'm like uh, you know, that really, that was great. And I, I have flashed on that throughout my business career, uh, throughout my life. And um, that's probably the best piece of advice I've ever had. And, uh, but I, I do like your envy is the thief of joy or whatever you, whatever you got from some fortune cookie at some Chinese restaurant. But, um, but I think yours is better than mine. More, more elegant for sure. Um, comparison is the thief. Of comparison. Joy. There, there yeah. you go. I love it. I love yeah, it's it. like, I mean, you know, like we're happy with, we like our show, but like, I don't sit around and say, yeah. well, Joe, well, why does Joe Rogan have so many more followers? Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I love our show. I love our audience. I'm excited about our get together. People are like, well, it's not as big as what Justin Bieber brought to the Ohio state. I don't care. I like my crew. I like my people. I like my life. I like my family. I like everything. So like, again, I don't, I don't care. Um, yeah, I mean, between you and Tony Telesmatic, those are the two smartest guys I've ever been around in terms of business. So um, Tony has some good advice for me that I, I regretfully didn't take, and it cost me a bunch of money a couple of years ago. Uh, so Tony T, uh, you were right. You're the best. I love you to death. I will never not listen to you again. Um, and I know you asked Nevada, but I don't know. Like, again, it's if you could do stuff you like to do and and get paid for it, that's uh that makes life a lot easier a lot more fun again like i always wanted to work in sports as a little kid i never thought i'd be talented enough to actually play sports i always thought it was gonna have to be a broadcaster or something like that so you know i grew and got better and meaner and became like a good football player and played but you know i really wanted to do this like i wanted to talk sports and that's why like when people are like well you're like this you know repository of of statistics and facts it's like well Cause I grew up reading the sports page. Like when I was in Naples, like I'd walk out to the driveway and get the newspaper every day and read the whole sports page. Like when I was sitting there eating my, you know, frosted flakes or whatever in the morning. So I studied sports. I used to watch, you know, like back in the old days, like I didn't have cable growing up. So whatever games were on, on Saturday and Sunday on NBC, like NBA, NBA on NBC, or whatever, I'd watch all of it. So, um, I don't know when you do stuff that you enjoy, it's a lot more fun. Like, I mean, that's the thing about like this brand, this meetup, um, it's going to be fun. Like I'm genuinely excited to meet everyone that's going to show up. Uh, I, I think it's going to be an absolute blast. You know, I'm, I'm driving people to this. Uh, it's really important you guys show up too, because again, I'm telling Buffalo Wild Wings, this thing's going to be awesome. So I need you guys to all uh, actually show up and, and have a good time. And it's going to be great. Like I'm not asking you guys to go, you know, run like a marathon or something. I'm asking you to come over and have a few beers and eat some wings and, you know, kind of meet each other. So I think it'll be really fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think that if you can, uh, if you can work with good people who work as hard as you do, 
then your life will be amazing. Now, if you work with people that are lazy and they're not talented, then your life's going to suck, you know, and you're never going to, and you're never going to respect those people because, you know, again, Nick Saban, who I, I love, I love Nick Saban. Like I love reading his books. I love listening to his quotes, his speeches, but you know, when he says like, <laughs> you know, mediocre people hate high achievers and high achievers hate mediocre people. Like that is, that is one of the greatest things I've ever heard. And there's nothing that is true on this earth. Then like, I don't want to be around guys like that. I don't want to be around the lazy guys that don't want to put in that work. Um, and thankfully, like I work with a guy and we work and you guys see us here every night. And again, I love it. Like, I can't wait to see you guys talk to you guys, answer your questions. So, uh, the chat is lit and I know you guys enjoy the show. So it always gives us a lot of energy to get ready to rock at seven every night because I know I get texts and emails and people on Buckeye scoop and whatever. And you guys say how much you guys enjoy kicking it every night. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, Evan Arvantis, thank you for the 10. Oh, God. Whew. What are the odds we get? David Sanders Jr., Nevada OH. I O. I mean, I think we have a puncher's chance. I mean, the, here's the hard thing about recruiting. I'll just be honest with you. Because, like, if you put a gun to my head today and it's like, you know, my life's on the line, I'll say we're not getting them. Just because, like, I've seen everything. But it's like the way Ohio State's been recruiting – and flipping and the progression of the program and the trajectory. Like, I mean, we didn't get Joy and Saiyan until we did. Uh, you know, we didn't get Caleb Downs until we did. You know, we didn't get like Brandon Ennis. Like, I mean, I was at camp watching Brandon Ennis, uh, like God, it was like three years ago, it felt like. And he's out there now. I was like, this kid is incredible. And I was like, and I was talking to like, you know, recruiting gurus who really are complete idiots. And, do we have any chance to get this kid? Oh, no. He's going to Oklahoma. Well, yeah, then Lincoln Riley left and reopened the commitment. And, you know, oh, he's going to go to Georgia. Nope. Where does he end up? Ohio State. You know, and that was, I remember that was the day about Colonel Tate. He didn't know who Colonel Tate was. Colonel Tate didn't even know what, what South Florida Express was. So, you know, I mean, I just don't know how, if you're serious about this and you want this to be a true business decision and not just, like, chase fast money, I don't know how you don't go to Ohio State at this point. Like, because, like, like Jordan Seaton chased fast money. He went to Colorado, went with Coach Prime. You know, he's going to be out of that, like, that, you know, uh, that dumpster fire. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, why on earth would you ever send your kid to go play for Coach Prime, who's going to be out of here after this year, after his, his superstar quarterback heads to the NFL? Like, that guy's not going to be there. Like, are you kidding me? But... They fell for it and they did it. And, you know, some of these kids, like when I, when I study what they say and what they do, I'm just like, you know, that kid's going to have, it's going to be tough slotting. I don't know how good that kid's really going to be, um, but we'll see. I mean, he's, he's trusting his career to Phil Lodeholt. Phil Lodeholt is a very good player in the NFL and at Oklahoma, but he's a first year offensive line coach working for coach prime. So he's never coached your line before other than at like smaller levels. And that guy who's the number one tackle in the country is trusting Phil Lowell to develop him into a top 10 pick. So I don't know. Like if my kid, if my kid was David Sanders Jr., I'm like, dude, Mickey Marotti, Ryan Day, Justin Fry, Chip Kelly. Like that's that's the pathway. You know, I mean, Chip Kelly, he knows what good tackles look like. So does Ryan. I mean, they coach Paris. I mean, Paris is, you know, as good of a young tackle as there's in the NFL. And DeWan, like we don't give DeWan enough to ever just because, you know, he didn't get drafted as high as PJ, but he should have. I mean, DeWan probably should have been a top, you know, 25 pick and you know, he got to slip down the board. But Paris, like six overall pick, like that's what you want to be. And, you know, again, when you go to a place like Ohio State where they just developed and raised and had Paris go from, you know, an early enrollee kid to six overall pick in three years, like that's, that's. Uh, that's not a theory. That's literally testimony. This is what we did for Paris Johnson. This is the track we put you on. Graduate in three years. First team All-American. Uh, he's the first player in Ohio State history to ever do that. Graduate in three years. First team All-American. And that's something that Monica said when she's coming in. This is what we want to do. And she and and she, and he got into grad school. So he's already admitted into grad school. So it's like, you know, I mean, like I said, Monica, is she's the real deal now. Um, but I, I think we get a punching chance. Again, our NIL... Is killer. We got Caleb Downs. We got Will Howard. We got Quinchon Judkins. Um, the depth chart is going to be 
absurdly appetizing if you're if you're that kid. So I don't know. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts on David Sanders? Yeah, like I said, it's it's going to be a tough putt, but you know we're, we're in the game. The you know, first thing is getting him on campus. We're in the game. There's relationships. There's testimony. Um, I, I do love the mom connection. I do love the PJ connection. So yeah, we'll know more after this weekend. We'll, we'll be able to give you probably a better sense. You know, right now I bet the field along with Kirk, but um, maybe after this weekend I might change my mind on that. You know, based upon new information. But um, you know, we're in it. Ohio State feels like they're in it, and I just I need to see Justin Fry pull some of these guys. I mean, I I, I got spoiled by watching Stud pull all these five stars from all over the country. And, and people hated on him, but he just, just cranked him out year after year after year and um, still waiting for Justin to do it. And so I'm, I'm hoping this uh, this will be the guy that uh, that breaks, get, is the slump buster for him, breaks, you know, gets him off the schneid. Love that. Uh, ZCM, thanks for being a scoop off Thanks for the five. Do you think uh, Wilson or Kelly could have turned McCord into a better quarterback? Uh, I feel like a lot of open receivers were left to die in the desert last year. I don't think so. I mean, I just, I just don't think Kyle McCord is any good. You know, again, I'm not, I, I said that last year, like there wasn't, and again, the players like him, nice kid, but I didn't think he was any good. And again, I know he was 13 ball big 10 and we went like 11 and one with him starting lost that Michigan game. And, you know, we were really close to him being good and us going to the playoffs and beating Michigan. But I mean, that Michigan game, he was atrocious. And I'm just like, dude, like, you got to hit some of these open receivers. But that's just me. And again, I'm not trying to be a hater. I wish him well. But the thing I always go back to is people say, Kirk, you're a hater. You don't know what you're talking about. But when Kyle McCord hit the open market, where did he end up? Syracuse. Nebraska passed on him to get Dylan Rayola. Uh, he, he, like I said, he didn't go to, you know, USC or. Uh, you know, like a high pro, he went to like one of the worst schools in the entire country, new, new coaching staff. Like that's going to be a disaster. The only thing that Kyle McCord has going for him is Syracuse's schedule is pretty soft. They're, they don't, they don't play Clemson. They don't play and somehow they dodge like every good team in the ACC. Uh, so that is going for him, but you know, he didn't, he didn't end up at like some, you know, some team that we're going to be worried about seeing in the playoffs. So uh, but I don't think Kevin Wilson could have done. It. I don't think Chip Kelly could have. I mean, Chip. I mean, Chip wants guys that are mobile. I mean, he had DTR and Marcus Mariota his freshman year, and uh, um, God, who's the guy they had in 07? Uh, who was really, really the guy that probably would have won the Heisman if he didn't tear his ACL? Dennis Dixon. You know, he had those guys. So I mean, you know, Kyle McCord and his like cement shoes that he ran around <laughs> because he was so slow. Like I don't think he's gonna fit. Um, and I tossed on David Sanders is a junior film. So this is actually from the previous film was from software, but he's detonating guys here. But, uh, your thoughts, Nevada, could Kevin Wilson or Chip Kelly have turned Kyle McCord into a better quarterback? Uh, I think answering that question. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't as down on Kyle as you were. I, I actually thought Kyle was, was okay. Um, but your, your point spot on though, at, at, at the college game, in my opinion, you have to be able, you have to run to be effective. And I look at you know you look at Georgia won back to back national championship with Stetson Bennett at quarterback because he was at least a willing runner. I think he ran for fourteen touchdowns on those two years or whatever it was. You have to run running it, it, at the college level. Running is just an absolute prerequisite to success. And Kyle was slow, and he had terrible pocket presence. That was the biggest knock on him. Was that he just he did not have that innate sense to be able to move around in the pocket to make life easier on the uh, on the offensive lineman and move away from the pressure, step up out of the pressure, let alone run, um, which he was not ever going to do. So I, I just think he was so limited that for a for a coach like Chip Kelly would have been really tough. But I thought he I thought he was he was fine, um, but his lack of running, lack of mobility, lack of pocket presence, I just think I, I think if you're that guy. You better have the golden arm. You better be C.J. Stroud, and even C.J. Stroud couldn't get it done without running. If C.J. Stroud would have run at Ohio State, our our offense would have been unstoppable. But but he didn't, um, and so we were really good, and we came really close, but we didn't quite get it done. So, um, but I, I I guarantee you this year it's a new day because Will, Devin, and Julian will all run, and uh, they're all willing runners. Um, they're all capable runners. 
and uh, we're going to see we'll see the quarterback on the move this year for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's going to be um, that'll be a huge upgrade to what we're trying to do uh, on offense. I think it'll be uh, it'll be good. Like I said, we're going to have some guys that are going to be uh, big big time dudes. Well, Nevada, uh, I think we can wrap this thing up. Gone for about an hour twenty. Uh, any final thoughts as we wrap the show up? No, just uh, appreciate everybody showing up um, night in and night out. We just, like I said, we just really appreciate everybody, everybody that works on the show, everybody that's here on the show. The fantastic questions, and again, if we can indulge uh, you to give us a like on the way out, those are so helpful. We appreciate it. And I say it every night, but. You hit that little thumbs up button right there. It really helps other people find the show and helps it get recommended on the recommended feed. And um, so if you want to help out the scoop one more time after already being here and, and doing th- that, give us a like and uh, really, really, uh, really appreciate it. Appreciate you all. Thank you guys for kicking it uh, with us as always. Uh, we'll be back at seven tomorrow night. Thank you guys as always. Appreciate it. Uh, if you guys could leave us a like, click subscribe, also click that little alert bell. Um, I think it'll be, uh, it'll be huge for us again. Thank you for growing this channel. It's a huge show because you guys made it one. So thank you for that. April 13th lane and high street, Buffalo wild wings will be the meetup. It's going to be fantastic. It'll be a blast. If you worry about guy scoop gear, I'll buy a beer and I'll make Nevada pay for it. Cause it's not going to be there. So I, uh, appreciate you guys as always shout out. You guys are watching from. Shout out my Southern Ohio boys, my Portsmouth boys, my Ironton boys, Chesapeake, South Point, uh, all at Galpolis. Appreciate all of you guys holding me down as always. Thank you. Uh, the rest of my Ohio folks up in Youngstown, Canton, Cleveland, Toledo, all through Columbus, New Albany, Lewis Center. Uh, appreciate you guys as always. And then my people down in Florida, Naples, Fort Myers, uh, Miami. Thank you guys for tuning in each and every night. Uh, and then Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, California, and the rest of the United States and the rest of the world. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Always love to see where you guys are watching from, so make sure you say that and who you guys are watching with. It's a family show, so I always like to see who is checking us out. As always, we appreciate you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Go Bucks.